is Aurora Crooks and today we are going to be discussing beaks and beak adaptations. So I talked a little bit about it in my first episode when I was going over general adaptations of birds, but today we're going to be focusing on arguably one of the most important parts of a bird's anatomy is their beak and where they're getting their food. So when we think about a beak, we think of just like a sharp thing or a sharp tool they use to either pick up or break apart food. But what we don't think about is that how a beak anatomy or what a beak actually looks like is actually carefully shaped by millions of years of evolution and habitat based on where the bird is actually living. So we can learn a lot about a species, its location, its how it's evolved, where it's evolved, and why it's evolved to have the specific adaptations from just looking at a beak alone when we're looking at a basic skeleton. So today I'm going to be going into some of the different types of beak adaptations and what to look out for when you're looking for a bird. One of the first beak or bill adaptations that I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit more about are the ones for seed eaters. So birds that eat seeds are going to have these really short, strong, triangular shaped bills that can crack open seeds that they find along the grounds. So you're going to find them more in grassland type of habitats or forests or places where they can nest easily and look for seeds among the ground. Um, these are, bills are very often cone shaped which means that they're found on many types of birds such as the cardinal, the American goldfinch, the white-throated sparrow, the song sparrow, and types of grosbeaks. Another type of beak that we're going to be focusing on are the beaks of insect eaters. So there's actually two type of insect eating birds that I kind of want to focus on, and they're aerial insectivores. So these are birds that are going to feed while they're in flight, and they feed primarily or entirely on insects, as I said before. But they catch and eat these airborne insects with their beaks that are super short and very flat. Their mouths are, can open really, really wide, and they're they act like nets in order to trap flying bugs. So this is kind of different from the second type of insect eating bird who mainly eats insects that are on twigs, leaves, and bark that you find along the ground. These kind of birds are gonna have bills that are thin and slender and very pointed. And so they're kind of similar to seed eaters or even though their bills are gonna be a little bit longer than a typical seed eater. So those are the two types. So you'll find the ones that eat on the ground and then the aerial insectivores that eat in the air. And so examples of these types of insect eating birds are gonna be the warbler, tree and barn swallows, common night hawks, purple martin, or the chimney swift. So one type of adaptation that I'm gonna be focusing on is that of the woodpecker. So woodpeckers are a type of bird that actually drill for food under bark and have beaks that are very strong and sturdy and taper at the tip. So Woodpeckers primarily just feed on insects. They're insectivores like I've mentioned previously. But woodpeckers are unique from other insect eating birds in fact that their beaks are very sturdy and that they do taper at that tip to make it super sharp. And so examples of woodpeckers would be the downy woodpecker, the hairy woodpecker, or the pileated woodpecker. that I'm going to be focusing on for beaks is actually one of my personal favorite birds, the hummingbird. So hummingbirds actually have very long tubular bills that resemble straws and they use those straw-like beaks to sip up nectar from flowers. These birds often have, well, the beaks are very long, they're very hollow, and they protect the bird's tongue from getting damaged when they're looking for flowers to slurp up. So the next type of bird beak adaptation that I'm going to be focusing on are mergansers or other fish eating or fish catching birds. They're specialized for eating fish and they're going to have these sharp tooth like structures on the edge of their bill to actually hold on to fish tightly when they dive in the water to catch them. So birds that hunt for fish in shallow water are going to have these especially long sharp beaks that they use to either catch or spear fish. So some examples of that would be the great blue heron or the snowy egret, although some species of ducks also catch and hunt fish to eat. Another beak adaptation that I'm going to be focusing on today is a lot of people's personal favorite, the raptors or the birds of prey. So these are going to be birds that eat other live animals or hunt for other animals that aren't water hunting animals or animals that look for fish. These are ones that look for live prey on the ground. So birds of prey have strong, sharp beaks that are actually hooked, so they're going to be curved, 
and these are going to be used to bite the skull or the neck of a live animal in order to disable it so that they can eat it whole. Um, if they're not going to eat it whole, then they also need those beaks to tear up the meat of the animal into small enough pieces for them to be able to fully swallow. So good examples of birds of prey that have these adaptations would be like the great horned owl, the bald eagle, or the cooper's hawk. So another type of bird beak adaptation that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today are going to be the filter feeders. So when I say filter feeders, I'm going to be talking about flamingos and some ducks, but not all ducks, just the ducks that are filter feeders. So birds like that have beaks that are gonna act as if they are strainers, to like pasta strainers almost. They filter water from, they filter the water that they're normally swimming in from their food. And so these strainers act as a way to separate the water and the mud from their food, plants, seeds, small animals from the water using like the comb-like edge of their beak in order to separate it properly. So the water enters the tip of the beak and then exits out from the side, leaving only the food that they can consume inside of it. And so, like I said, the examples of this would be a flamingo, a mallard, or like a blue winged teal. Adaptation that is different from the aerial fishing type of birds or birds that are filter feeders are our shorebirds. So shorebirds are very special in their beak adaptations. They're going to have super long, thin beaks that they use to probe for in the sand or in the mud. So some examples of that would be the spotted sandpiper, the American woodcock, or the Wilson snipe. When you look at these birds, you'll notice that they have a super long, almost straw-like appearing beak, but these beaks almost act as if they are chopsticks used to probe into the medium in which they are living in, like sand or mud, and then to pick it up so that they can have the insect or small piece of fish that they're looking for. One adaptation I also wanted to focus on are the beak adaptations of warblers and thrushes. Warblers and thrushes generally have very sharp, small, but pointed beaks, and these are going to be used to pick up insects from leaves, logs, or twigs. So some examples of that would be the yellow warbler, the common yellow throat, the American robin, the wood thrush, or the oven bird. All that being said, this marks the end of my video. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully you guys learned a lot about beaks, beak adaptations, and how each species is uniquely designed for their environment which shows in every single feature that they have, beaks included. My name is Aurora Crooks with New York City Audubon. Thank you.